Please welcome back the director of The Giant, Johannes Nehom. And we have uh, two of the actors uh, with us as well. I think they're both going to join us on stage. Uh, Johan Killen and uh, Nicholas Franson. Thank you very much. Hope you had a nice time. <laughs> so thank you, uh, thanks all for being here. Uh, I'll start with a question for you, Johannes. Uh, I think one of the most striking things about the film is the uh, extreme contrast in tone. Um, it's, for the most part, a very uh, realistic film uh, with a very realist aesthetic, but it also has some very uh, distinctive uh, fantasy sequences. Can you talk a little bit about the decision to combine these two registers? Yeah, it was really important with this, with this uh, big contrast with kind of the fantasy world, so to speak, and uh, the real world. Uh, I wanted it to be uh, evident that, I mean, that this guy, Rickard, had, had a lot of uh, uh, things in his mind. Uh, it was a huge universe there, if you just kind of uh, scratched on the surface. Uh, so it was really frustrating for, uh, I mean, for the photographer to, to shoot these other ugly scenes. It should be like uh, re really raw and ugly with no lighting at all. And, uh, almost just use uh, uh, ordinary uh, life situations, uh, real environments, so to speak. Um, and then we had the, those landscapes with a lot of visual effects, which was, uh, I mean, completely different to work with those different uh, parts. Um, do you have uh, an amazing cast in this film. Um, I'm glad that both of you are here. Uh, it's a Ricard's role is, is, is very important. I'd love to hear you talk about casting uh, <clears throat> that part and also working with, with these guys. And if, if I understand it correctly, it's a, it's a mix of professional and non-professional actors um, and also how you put that mix together and how you worked with them. Yeah, that, that was also uh, uh, a big challenge uh, to, to make. It's really, it's nice to have uh, professional actors to kind of keep things together uh, in scenes. So, uh, Johan Chilean and uh, Niklas here represents the professional the pros, yeah. actors. I don't know if you recognize them from the from the film. They look very different there. Both of them. They do I would actually. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it was um, really important with this uh, the documentary tone to the film. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of, uh, for example, sports sequences, and for me, it was really important that uh, that you could feel that. This is real petank players mm -hmm. uh, moving here, right? like the Danish uh, petank players. They are uh, they are Scandinavian masters of petank as well. Uh, <laughs> apart from <laughs> being good actors, now they maybe are starting an act acting career after this. Right. But uh, they started with petank. But when we uh, when we were looking for um, for role for Niklas here, for example, uh, he plays this guy that hits Rickard with a ball in the head. Uh, in real life, it's a very nice guy. <laughs> but uh, uh, the first question I asked him was that if he could play petank. Yeah. It was really important for that role that he could play petank. And then he said, yeah, I'll play the Swedish championship, so I'm, I'm pretty decent <laughs> petank player. It's a very uh, uncommon sport in Sweden, petank. Yeah. It's, uh, Un uncommon. Uncommon, okay. yeah. yeah. No. But you're both good at it? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> you, uh, Johan was practicing a lot for the role. Yeah, I, I had a... I had a uh, Trainer, I don't like microphones. <laughs> I had a personal trainer <coughs> down in that small village I live, and I worked with him for a couple of months. But I'm an old juggler and ice hockey player, so uh, not that difficult. What they said was, when I came into this club south of Sweden, they told me, "Oh, nice! Now you lower the middle age with 50 years, so you can imagine what kind of people play, <laughs> except these two." And Nicholas, you're actually, you're, you're I'm actually the w only one that's both an actor and a petanque player in the whole movie. So um, I had it both. Uh, I, I do it just as worse um, as an actor, as a petanque player. I hope <laughs> it's good enough to believe in. What's, what's the most important to you, the petanque or the acting? Uh, in this movie, uh, it was the petanque. Of course, uh, because everybody was so much better than me, so I had to 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 do the psychological, you know, game with them, uh, being an ass, 
throwing the petanque at their heads and um, those sort of things. Yeah, but uh, I think I got it. I, I, th I think I became a better petanque player after this. Maybe a better actor. Uh, actually, <laughs> I uh, even can call me an actor now. <laughs> But I think one thing is that is really important to understand when you are a professional uh, actor working with a lot of uh, amateurs or whatever, it is that you have to really find the level of play. It's really important to feel that you are in tune with your co-actors, wh whether they are prof professionals or not, it doesn't matter. And, and that was fine to work with Johannes because he let us roam around freely. And that could be like the big uh, scene with a, with a birthday party. We, we were ready for a shooting at 10 o'clock and it was wreck. And at 4 o'clock in the afternoon it was stop. <laughs> so they had a lot of material, but it also meant that we had a, a really nice time of uh, play together, all of us who was in that scene. And, and that, I think, makes the movie for me that, that, that it's so playful with everybody and that he let us roam. We, as an actor, um, we sometimes never knew when the camera was on or off, so you, you, you had to be in your role all the time, so it could be for one hour or two hours, you never knew when the camera was on, so I had a lot of difficulties to make friends during this uh, shooting <laughs> because they thought I was like that in real life, uh, drinking from 10 o'clock in the morning to late in the afternoon. Um, nobody w wanted to go to dinner with me in the evening. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was nice to be in character for four or six hours. It was nice as an actor to live the part. It took you a couple of months to get out of the role afterwards, right? Yeah, I had to keep the, the hair color for two months, um, walk with a cap for two months, <laughs> being real shaped of that yellow color. Um, but uh, when I um, cut the hair, I felt as Nicholas again. Can you tell us a bit about the actor who plays uh, Ricard? Yeah, he's called uh, Christian Andreen, and he's, um, uh, he was an amateur actor. He'd done a little bit acting before, mainly in uh, theaters, in, uh, where he lives in that part of Sweden. Uh, I found him on an extra site. Uh, there, there was, uh, I mean, I, you could search for different criterias, and I was looking for a, uh, a short uh, uh, guy. Uh, but I, I wanted a person that had um, a lot of experience from... Uh, from similar situations as Rickard in the film had that could understand uh, the, the person and character. So, we, I mean, we, we tested a lot of, uh, a lot of, lot of uh, people for this role, but he was the, the only one that, uh, that I felt immediately like uh, he understands it directly. I saw a casting movie. I, I didn't meet him for the first time when he was casting. Right. I just saw a casting movie of the situation. And it took, I mean, after one second, I'm not exaggerating, it, it felt like, oh my God. That's him, but he, he felt so natural in his kind of autistic behavior that I, I thought he was uh, that person for real. Mm -hmm. So that was my only concern. Is he, I mean, is he acting or is he, is he that person that he is? Then of course, in the, in the film he has this mask on, it's not his real face, so he doesn't look at all like that. But the idea was to, um, with his mask, to kind of help him go also go into this, uh, this isolated, uh, 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 the isolation from uh, from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. he should, it should be like a filter between him and the rest of the world. He couldn't really hear when he had right. his mask on and he saw uh, just with one eye. So it, it helped him to get into this uh, this mood. And like with uh, with uh, Niklas, uh, he was in also in character a lot because uh, he couldn't really communicate during uh, the pauses in between the shots. Uh, because of all this uh, covering his face that he had to wear the entire day. Can you talk about just the work with, the, with, I guess, the makeup artists in terms of designing this particular you know, deformity and were there things you were, you were thinking of? Obviously, yeah, the sense of him being isolated and, and you also see his, his point of view. He's you know, so constrained, um, but yeah, just wondering how you came up with that. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a nice, uh, kind of the the look of him is something that uh, uh, I mean uh, origins from uh, a long time ago when I was a kid. I had these uh, reoccurring uh, fever dreams uh, where I, I kind of felt like I was trapped in another body, and uh, I, I didn't really I wasn't really in those situations. I wasn't really connected uh, to the surroundings. Like I wasn't connected to my own body. It didn't feel like my limbs when I was moving my arms and legs. It wasn't my arms and legs, it was like, uh, it was like just dead flesh. Yeah. I felt like a puppeteer in a way. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to build that, uh, uh, a character that, uh, uh, that, had, uh, that you could see when you saw that character, you, you could actually feel his isolation and his alienation to the rest of the world. Um, the, I think uh, it's a film that is kind of suggestive of many different uh, Genres, and I'm wondering if you were you were thinking of you know combining them or kind of uh, working against some of these conventions. It's it's a sports movie. It's kind of like an un obviously an underdog sports movie, which is a, a very familiar and crowd pleasing genre. Um, it also has a bit of a fairy tale aspect to it, um, and the music, the really great score by Bjorn Olsen, introduces this um, like Ennio Morricone. Mm -hmm. Spaghetti Western yeah. style um, to it, and so I was wondering, you know, just the idea of like just referencing uh, uh, these different genres. Yeah, and then there's this documentary tone to it as well. It's right. like uh, another genre, so yeah. to speak. But I really, I mean, I um, I'm a quite frustrated uh, person. I get really easily bored, and I want to amuse myself. So uh, I want to play around uh, with different spectras, with different. Uh, uh, different kind of storytelling, uh, and I also I want to create some kind of uh, amusement to the audience as well, uh, like a, uh, a mixture of uh, of everything in a way, like an expressionistic painting, uh, where you can uh, uh, you don't really know the language, or when you know the language, they start to speak another language uh, in a way. And then I I mean I really enjoy old sports movies like uh, Karate Kid. I looked, uh, I watched a lot as a kid and uh, there's not, this ending is a lot of Karate Kid inspired uh, sequences. And uh, I mean, I re I'm, was really into Sergio Leone movies as a kid as well. Uh, like uh, some of them I've seen like uh, 20 times. And, uh, and the musician Bjorn Olsson, he's, I mean, he, he makes that kind of music anyway. And he's one of my favorite uh, Swedish musicians. I, I listen a lot to him. And I thought about him already when, when writing the script. Uh, so I guess uh, it's, I mean, everything is also inspired by my own life. I mean, all these situations is, is for my own life in one way or the other. I, I play a lot of, I did play quite a lot of petanque in a way. I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't so good. I'm still not so very good, but I played it a lot. And uh, a lot of the people in the film is uh, uh, people from my club when I played. Uh, like the the chairman of the club, he was chairman in in the club that I played in, right. and just by accident he happened to be a really good actor as well. So you say it's not a you say it's not a very popular sport in in Sweden, but is there does this Nordic Championship exist with this intense Swedish Danish rivalry? No, I don't think so. There's uh, I mean there's a lot of rivalry rivalry in uh, in petank yeah. as a whole anyway. Uh, I think it's rivalry in every sport, but uh, it's it gets kind of comic when it's it's a small sport and then yeah. no one but the the players care about then it gets a bit comic <laughs> uh, but i mean it doesn't look really like this but uh, as a petank player you get used to play in uh, strange situations i mean at uh, uh, s really uh, desolate soccer uh, uh, what do you say um, soccer uh, where you play soccer fields. soccer fields uh, uh, I mean, uh, it's not it's not any money involved, and that is uh, you can feel that a lot. <laughs> we can take a few uh, questions from the audience. If you want to just raise your hand, yes. Yeah, For, uh, yeah if you like. I, like. I mean, I think the question is of relating the idea of imagining this inner world to somebody who uh, projects himself out of it through astral projection. Yeah, I mean. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, the whole film is, is based on personal experience in one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I've had that kind of experiences. 
as I said, it started from when I was a really young kid and had those fever dreams, these reoccurring fever dreams. I felt really, they, they uh, made a bit, they made a, you had them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about it afterwards. <laughs> we can yeah. compare. Yeah, no, but it was really, it was, uh, I mean, it, it uh, even though I wasn't uh, old, it, it made a big impact. It didn't happen so many times either. It wasn't like all the time at all, but uh, they reoccurred and uh, they really kind of uh, got me thinking about uh, who I am in universe. Uh, if I'm not here, where am I? And that kind of uh, questions. Uh, and. Uh, I, also, I, when I grew up, my, my dad, he, he worked at, uh, at daycare uh, centers and uh, uh, homes like this uh, in, in the film. And uh, I did also for a while. And I got to know a lot of people around in this, uh, uh, in this society. Was any character in that film a representation of your father? It's not that easy. No, I wouldn't really say that. Uh, it's all uh, very blurred. I don't want anyone to recognize themselves in the film, so it's uh, I kind of blur the borders a lot. Uh, so it, you can't say that anyone is is a certain person in real life. I could, in one way, I could say that I am Ricard, but uh, in many, in most cases, I would say that I'm not. But I, I mean, I've been there, uh, being him for a while, now and then, and I still am sometimes. I mean, uh, when I get really, I mean. Uh, focused or defocused in different stuff, I can go in that kind of uh, mood. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's hard to generalize uh, if you speak about that. I mean, those places that I work with with the film, uh, I mean, they are those places uh, uh, I really love being being there and see how uh, how much uh, warmth and uh, compassion there is in in, the, in those uh, daycare centers or whatever you call it. But it's uh, it's really hard to t tell. There's so many bad uh, examples as well when it doesn't work at all. And um, I mean, general problems could be that uh, I mean that. Um, uh, those people are not really taken serious, uh, that they are uh, maybe uh, patronized or uh, whatever. They, they, they put them in a very secure situation where they don't have any uh, 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 anything to struggle with. It's like, uh, uh, it's hard to say. I, I, mean, I mean, I experienced both a horrible situation and uh, really good situations. Uh, uh, and what was your other question? Did you want people to take yeah, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it was important that you didn't think about uh, s special effects. That was really important, that you could really get into it. it uh, if, if you saw that he was wearing a mask, it would be, uh, it would be kind of uh, meta-filmic, and uh, that's not really what I wanted to, to do this time. Yeah, okay, that's nice, thank you. We were actually thinking about when launching the movie of kind of... Uh, building the impression that he exists for real and that he should use a mask when uh, he was in interview, doing interviews and so. But it got too complex and uh, too, uh, too expensive and uh, it would be too tough for, for Christian as well to do that. Uh, but maybe it would, be, it would be nice advertising, maybe. Uh, okay. I think that's probably a good note to end on because we do have to get ready for the next screening. Um, but I want to thank you all for coming and thank you for being here. Thank you for, uh, for coming here. Thanks a lot.